Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you how to make this little nursery bassinet. A lot of you have asked me how I've done it and um, today I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is get yourself a recycled bottle. Um, the one that I used for this was actually a suave bottle and what I did was I cut out the bottom of the bottle and then you have this option too where you have the attachment piece here. Just cut it out into a shape that works for me. Cut straight across here first and then come back and trim up the rest of it. I just used a knife and a pair of scissors to do that with. It's really easy to cut. But if you're using a knife, be careful. All right. After that, then I took the top part of the bottle where the neck is and I cut that off as well. The middle of the bottle, we're going to also use that because that can be a bassinet or a second bassinet. So that way the whole bottle gets used and you get two bassinets from it. The very first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself the bottle, empty it, clean it, and then get yourself some foam board. I always save the leftover foam board even if it's got stuff on it from when I used it before because you can always use it for other purposes. All right, once you have that, then what you want to do is set your bassinet directly on top of it and trace it. So get yourself a pencil, a pen, make sure it's very sharp, has a nice point on it. Go inside and trace it. Don't trace it multiple times, just trace it one time. After that, you can take your X-Acto knife and you can very carefully just go through and cut that out. If you're using a regular knife, you can do that as well, but it's not going to give you that you know, pristine edge. So you see how you get that nice smooth edge? If I use this, I'm not going to be able to get around that corner as easily. And if I use scissors, it's just going to bunch it. Okay, so I'm going to finish cutting this out so you don't have to watch the whole thing. All right, once you have that, then you're going to pop that into the bottom. That's going to give you your base for the bottom of that. Okay, now if you don't want it to have a bottom, then you can just leave it as is and not even worry about doing that part. But then you're going to have the issue of this sliding inside. Okay, so what I do is I cut multiples of this pattern until I get it the height that I want it. So I'm going to cut some more of those. All right, so after you have your circles cut out or your ovals cut out and everything, there's two things you can do. You can continue to cut them out like this so that you have an even amount all the way up. But if you have lace that you're not gonna see it or you're putting silk behind it like that, then you don't actually have to cut them all exactly like that. You can take a shortcut and just kind of cut some rectangles or some squares. And that can be your fillers. Once you have those, then what you can do is put one on the bottom and then glue them to the height that you're going to want. And then just make sure they're within that oval. If they're not, then you're going to have to cut it down a little bit more. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and take one of your ovals. And I didn't take my time cutting this one neat because I knew it was going to be on the bottom. 
All right, and then I'm just going to press that in there. Now remember to keep checking your height because you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. So right now if I stop there then my bassinet would be right there but I want to bring my bassinet up to about there. So that means I'm going to need at least two more layers. Now, if you're going to put a mattress and not use this, you may want to stop here but I'm just gonna use the phone as the base because I have no need to put a mattress in here that's actually a mattress because the baby will never ever know because it's fake. <laughs> I'm just taking off some excess here because I used two big pieces. Be very careful when you're using an X-Acto knife though because it will cut right through your fingers. Trust me, I've done it before. It's not pleasant. Okay, so now there you have that. That's that. I think I still need to go another layer even with adding the mattress. And then that should bring me pretty close by the time I put the mattress in there. Maybe even an additional one would work. Okay, so I'm actually going to add the three more on there. And then I think I'll call it a day with that. Okay, so now I want to get the one that I had need, which is this one. And I want to save that one for the very last piece that I put in. All right, so this should fit in here if I did it right. And if it doesn't, then you're just going to have to trim it. Actually, I cut it to fit this one, so I'm going to trim that edge off. Okay, so once I have that, then I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue on the bottom piece. And I'm going to insert it down in there and press it and hold it. All right, now after that, then you want to get yourself a piece of material that's long enough that it's going to wrap around the entire thing. You want to fold it in and the distance in there you want to have a hold of. Okay, so I can tell I want to go right up about a quarter of an inch from here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this material. Now if I was up downstairs, I'd be using my rotary blade and my cutting mat. But since I'm not, we're going to go with this. All right. Then you want to take your material and you want to go ahead and glue it inside with the silk or satin or whatever you're using. And just like this, be careful not to burn yourself and then fold it down. Okay. All right. 
Then I'm gonna do a very thin line of glue on the outside just to kind of keep that in place while I'm doing the rest of the gluing. You wanna repeat that process, but when you come to the curve, you're going to need to put a little slit in there. And it would help if I actually had my sewing scissors because then it would cut better. All right, so go ahead and glue that down. Read that, repeat that process. And I'm just using this to hold it because I know that hot glue is on the outside edge. I don't like to get my fingers burnt by hot glue. So I'll let it cool for a second and then I'll pull it off. All right, now I went ahead and cut that there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here by gluing that inside. Now you wanna make sure you're getting as close to this piece here as you possibly can because you wanna have it hidden by the mattress. Okay, now for this part, I'm just going to tuck that under. And then come all the way around here. All right, now I'm gonna put a thin line of glue going from where I started. And then the best way to do this is to just roll it on the table. And then adjust it at the end. Okay. Now, once you've done that, then you want to come back to the beginning and you want to cut straight up. All right. This part here. I'm going to glue together so it becomes one. And then I'm going to put a little fold in it with a little bit of glue. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because remember you're going to hide this all by lace. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut this all the way around. Now you have two choices. You can use these scissors or you can use your other kind of scissors either way. Um, like your, um, I can't think of the name of it. Pink and shears, sorry. But since I'm putting lace on here, I'm just going to trim it as is. And I'm fine with that. I can go back and adjust it if I need to once I have it done. Okay, now that's obviously um, gonna fray, so you probably wanna take some liquid stitch or some Mod Podge and put on the end of it if you're not gonna do lace. But since I'm doing lace, I'm okay with that. Okay, so now that I have that done, I need to cover my hood. All right, and here's two pieces to the hood. Now, for this one. I'm doing this exactly the way I did this one here. So you do it the way you want, but this is how I did this, so I'm gonna do this one the same way. All right, you wanna go ahead and cover this completely with lace, I mean with silk or satin, whatever you're using.
and I'm just flattening it out. It doesn't matter if the glue shows through because, again, you're going to have the lace on there. This is more or less to have the inside to where it doesn't look like there's going to be fabric there. All right, so set that aside and let it cool. And now we're going to do the lace on the ends or the satin on the inside. I don't know why I can't say that right, but you guys get the point. Now I'm holding it like this so that I can just go straight down to the bottom and then press it in place. So I just put it on a little bit of a fold so that I can get it in there. All right, now I just wanna take the leftover material I'm just going to wrap it around. And then cut it at the back. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. and then cut it. Now I'm gonna glue it again. And then where I have all of this, I'm going to trim that off. Okay, so now when you look inside and you look into the bassinet, you're only going to see that silk. All right, so now you have this piece here that you're gonna have to fold over into that. And you're gonna glue that exactly the same way that you did this one. The only difference is you need to fold these ends up first and glue them down so that you have a nice neat there, neat edge there. Now you wanna glue this inside. 
Okay, so I put a little bit of glue in the center to get it started. Just to kind of hold it in place. Then once I have it in place, I'm going to slide my sides down. And this part can be a little bit tricky because you got to be careful. All right, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there. I'm going to fold that inside and just kind of hold it there. And then I'm using the scissors to just help me hold it. That way I don't get my finger burnt. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Oh, I'm going to put some up further on the side there. All right, now for the back. A lot of this isn't gonna be seen, but just so that you have it uniform going all the way around the same as you did the rest, this is why we did this. Gonna fold that over. And then hold it in place. And then do the same exact thing with that. You're going to take your seam and you're going to tuck it down in with a fold. And then I'm holding it with the scissors so I don't burn my hand again. And as I said, this would fray. You know how I said that earlier. So you might want to put some stuff on it if you plan on leaving it open. Okay, so now you have two options. You have... The option of the big lace, the really small lace, which is what I did on this one, or you can do the solid lace here. So if you do this lace, you're only going to need to go around one time. Okay? If you do the smaller lace, you're going to have to go around multiple times. Okay? Okay? And then you're going to have to figure out how you want to do the top. If you want to do the top with one piece here and have a little bit of the satin showing, or if you want to do like I did, only have the satin showing on the inside. And then um, I actually raised this up a little bit with a piece of foam when I did this because I wanted the lace to overhang and not come directly to the edge, which it looks better that way. Okay. So for this one, we can do it a little bit like that. And then for the back, we can kind of go up and put it in there. Now I'm going to remove some of this off of here with this seam. because I don't want to see that edge. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here like this and just squish it together. Just so I have a little bit of a pattern. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put a little bit of hot glue right along this front edge about a quarter of an inch back and halfway up. Okay, I'm going to kind of squish that down just a little bit. All 
All right, and then I'm gonna go back again and repeat that process. And you should have a gap in between. Now, if you notice, the wider lace gives you more frill than this thin lace. And I found that if you take off the trimming when you're doing the hood, you get more effect of the lacy look. Okay. And then, again, you can do it the same way only difference is now we're going to leave this on here because we want it to look like it has a sewn edge going in there so to start with this one this looks like it's got some glue or something they must have glued the lace to the thing because it was stuff when I opened it but um I'll cut that off all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start out with a little bit of glue doesn't look like it has a right or left side here so we're just gonna go ahead and put this right here at this edge I just did that backwards I need to go this way all right so let me start that over and get rid of this lace Let me start over here. I'm sorry. I started the wrong side. I'm not thinking. All right, so now I want to put my edge of lace right there so that it's covering, just covering where I had the seam from the other lace. And I just did two little things of glue right there and then down. Okay, now if you want to add more of a lacy look, you can always go back and trim it with something smaller as well. I'm gonna tack this down with a little bit of glue. Now, to do the bottom edge, you have to start at the bottom. I'm going to say right about here would probably do it with this thick lace. Just making a L on my lace. So I can tack down my edge. And 
and then I'm gonna follow this all the way around. Alright, then I'm going to finish that edge off with a reverse L going down. And trim it. Do the same thing again. Okay, this time you're lifting up your lace here. Because it's the end, I'm just going to kind of go a little bit in the zigzag motion as well. Now you can go back and you can tack down all of your lace on the edges. And any spots where you see white, you can go back and relace that. Like I just think this has too much right there, so I'm just gonna kinda add an extra piece of lace right in here. Gonna bring it right to that edge and let it cool off some. And if you do it right, it should look like it's all one piece of lace attached to that. All right, so now so that that lace looks like it's blended in with the front lace, we're going to do a little trick. Since this is wider lace than what I used before, it's really noticeable. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of, right where I just sealed it, I'm going to glue a piece of this here. And 
then glue that right in with it. Then on this corner, I'm going to put a little piece and I'm going to pinch it together into like a little triangle right there. And then we'll just continue to wrap that lace up in there. I didn't cut the lace quite long enough, so I'm going to piece it together. And I'm just going to put it back right where the original piece is. And then cut it right there. That way it looks like it's all one. All right, I'm going to start this one. right up underneath of here the same way we did the other one before I glue that corner. Now, for this corner to look like it's all blended together, we need to bunch it up. And then I still have that lace underneath of here. Now I do think I like the white lace better because it's smaller and you get more detail, but you get the idea. All right, now for the mattress. You need to take the mattress Make sure it fits in there, that all your material and everything is going to allow it to fit, which the material will take some of it off. I think I cut one smaller for this purpose. Alright, so see how the material and the hot glue is allowed the thickening? So now you need a little trim a little bit. So I'll just trim a little bit of it off and then it should fit. Okay, 
So that fits pretty good. I'm going to actually take a little bit more because I want to allow for the fabric to get in there. Okay, so you can line it with the silk and have it in there just like this with the silk so everything's silky, or you can use a different type of fabric and give it a little bit of contrast. It's completely up to you what you do. I'm gonna just do it silk since everything else is silk or satin, whatever this material is, I don't really know. Okay, so I just went ahead and put some glue on one part of this and I'm just gonna kind of pull it to the corners, just like that. And I'm gonna press it all down. I'm gonna trim off part of this. And then I'm gonna go back and take off where it did not glue because you don't need all this excess on there. It's just gonna be in the way and make too much gold. Oh, that string just wants to stay on me. All right, now I'm just kinda of trimming the corner a little bit. All right, keeping the front soft. Now you can add a mattress or something if you want, but I see no point in it. And there's even a DIY mattress that you could use for the same type of thing if you wanted to actually have a mattress in here or a little mattress pad. That's under um, the video tutorial where I did the bed repair. You can follow that same steps to make a mattress. The same thing for this, just make it smaller. And as you see, I'm just pulling my corners inward as I go along. And then I'm saving the edge for last on this. All right, and if you have any gaudiness, trim it off because you don't want it to stick up. All right, now you can glue all that back down where you just kind of pulled that off. And then just put a little bit of hot glue right there. And the string is sticking all over this thing. You see that? It's all string. And then you just wanna, oh, I'm putting it in the wrong bed. You just want to put it right down in the bed. And then there you have it. You have a blue one, which I'll have to glue a piece of foam on the bottom. And then you have a white one. You decide which one you like best. But like I said, you can use any kind of lace. You just have to modify the lace you know, to what you're doing. And like this to me is super, super lacy and very, very frilly. And I don't know, I don't really like the big lace. I probably should have went with the little lace, but I mean, you can also go back and trim your edge, I guess. Maybe that won't look so bad if I just trim the edge with a thin thing of lace around it, that might look better. I don't know, but you can do that. You can do the white lace do the one row around it. It's completely up to you. Okay, so here it is with the white lace that's all cotton. And I went ahead and put the blue in there for the bedding. And I also tacked down the bottom as well. Again, this one's extra frilly. I'm not sure I like the extra frilly one. Um, I guess maybe for a girl it would be all right. 
And I think I could have cut the inside lace up here or satin a little bit longer, but it's okay. All right, so here they are. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Like and subscribe. Leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. And check out my website for lots of free printables, um, free furniture templates, and lots, lots more. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.